in this session we are going to discuss about linear arrangements in case of linear arrangements we are supposed to arrange a group of people in a row and to solve questions based on linear arrangements we need to be clear with two points the first one is the direction sense that is the left and the right of a person when he is sitting in a row and the second point is how to understand the given statement let's first look at the direction sense in case of linear arrangements linear arrangements can be generally classified into two types the first one is the persons facing north and the second one is persons facing south so we need to understand what will be the left or right of a person when he is facing north and what will be the left or right when he is facing south let us first look at the group of persons facing north let us assume these are five persons sitting in a row where all of them are facing north now if we try to take the position of one of these persons who is facing north we can understand that left of this person will be towards our left on the paper and the right of this person will be towards our right on paper so remember whenever a person is facing north left of that person should be taken towards our left on paper and the right of the person should be taken towards our right on the paper but what happens when a person is facing south let us assume this is again a group of five persons who are facing south when a person is facing south direction it is clear that he is in the downward direction on paper and in such a case if we try to take up the position of one of these persons who is facing south we can understand that left of this person will be towards our right on the paper and right of this person will be towards the left on the paper so very clearly when a person is facing south the right of that person should be taken towards our left on paper and left of this person should be taken towards our right on paper so that is the difference between a person facing north and a person facing south simply remember that when a person faces north left of that person is our left and right of that person is our right but in case if a person faces south left and right gets interchanged that is the person's left will be our right on paper and the person's right will be our left on paper so we can now fill this table to remember this easily when a person faces north left of the person will be towards our left and right of the person will be towards our right but when a person faces south left of the person facing south should be towards our right and right of the person who is facing south should be towards our left so if we can simply remember this table it will be easy for us to take the left and right of a person when he is sitting in a row facing north or south the second important point that we need to understand here is the types of statements which are given in case of linear arrangements as we have already discussed in case of circular arrangements there are two types of statements the type one is p is third to the right of q and fourth to the left of r and the second type of statement is p is third to the right of q who is fourth to the left of r so as you can see here the major and the only difference in these two types of statements is the word and in the first statement and who in the second type of statement now how to differentiate these two statements if you if you take the first statement that is p is third to the right of q and fourth to the left of r it can be divided into two parts the first part is p is third to the right of q so we can arrange p third to the right of q depending on whether they are facing north or south and the second part of the statement is fourth to the left of r now the question here is who is fourth to the left of r is it p or q as we have already discussed in case of circular arrangements whenever the word and is used we always refer to the first person so we can say that p is fourth to the left of r so the second part of the statement here is p is fourth to the left of r similarly instead of and sometimes the word but is used that is p is third to the right of q but fourth to the left of r and in some cases the word while is used that is p is third to the right of q while fourth to the left of r in all these three cases we always refer to the first person so the first part of the statement can be taken as p is third to the right of q and the second part will be p is fourth to the left of r now the second type of statement here is p is third to the right of q who is fourth to the left of r now again even the second statement can be divided into two parts the first part here is p is third to the right of q 
so p can be arranged third to the right of q depending on whether they are facing north or south now the second part here is fourth to the left of r now as the word who is used and we have discussed already in case of circular arrangements whenever the word who is used the second person that is q is referred so we can say that the second part here is q is fourth to the left of r so simply understand that whenever the word who is used we always refer to the immediate preceding person so the second part here will be q is fourth to the left of r so q can be arranged fourth to the left of r depending on whether they are facing north or south so these are the two types of statements which we get in case of linear arrangements so depending on whether the conjunction and or but or while is used you just take the first person as a reference and when the word who is used we take second person as a reference let us now understand the major difference between a circular arrangement and a linear arrangement as we have discussed in case of a circular arrangement we can start from any position on the circle let's assume we have to arrange eight persons around the circle so the eight positions can be fixed in this manner and the first person can be placed anywhere on the circle because a circle has got no definite starting point or ending point but as you can see in case of a linear arrangement we have a definite starting point and an ending point for example this position is the first position and this is the second position and similarly this is the eighth position so as we have a definite starting and an ending point we can place a person on the row only when we know his position from either the left end or the right end so remember that whenever we do a linear arrangement we should know the position of a person from either of the ends only then we can place him on the row but in case of a circular arrangement the person can be placed on any of the positions as there is no definite starting point or ending point so the one point which we need to remember in case of linear arrangements is that we can place a person only when we know his position from either of the ends let us now take an example of a simple linear arrangement 